during this playthrough, I'm going to show you everything I do to have the very best start you can possibly have in No Man's Sky. Once your little avatar stops spinning around, the direction you are facing right now is the direction of your crashed ship. Let's do this. Yoink! Now we really need to find some sodium as well as oxygen. These deuterium plants are really cool. They'll give you extra rocket pack boost. If you do a melee attack and then hold down your rocket boost, well, you're basically gonna be super spaceman and it looks like we found a little building we can hide in. These damaged machinery are actually pretty cool. Now you can loot the fluids and turn it into nanites later. I generally just delete them because it's a long drawn out process. On rare occasions, they'll even give you some S-Class modules, which is pretty win. Now let's get inside and get our hazard protection all charged back up. Ultimately, I was looking for a cave in order to recharge my hazard protection, but we'll just use this little building behind us as our lifeline. At this stage of the game, your scanner is all busted up and you need to make an analysis visor. In order to do that, you're going to have to farm up some carbon as well as some ferrite dust. Since we're out here mining, let's talk about how to mine efficiently. Now, if you notice, I'm trying to keep my mining beam in the red without letting it overheat. So when it's about to overheat, I'll just let off the trigger and then hold it back down until it's about to overheat again. If you can maintain this method without overheating, well, congratulations, you won yourself a cookie and the ability to cut through these deposits twice as fast as when you're mining in the green. Unfortunately, I didn't get enough ferrite dust to get the scanner fixed, but let's get this analysis visor plopped in there. We're just going to have to make ourselves a carbon nanotube. A carbon nanotube only costs 50 carbon, and at this point I mined up a bunch of that. So there we go, we have our analysis visor all sorted. Now we can scan all the minerals and plants in order to find out what their secondary drops are. Once I get my scanner fixed, I like to spend a little bit of time scanning basically every single plant and every single mineral that I can in order to find out what their secondary drops are. It is worth noting until you scan each one of these plants or minerals, you will never get the secondary drop. And sometimes these secondary drops are very, very good. I highly recommend before you lift off this first planet that you spend a little bit of time scanning the fauna because if you scan all of them, oh my goodness, you're going to get a huge bonus of nanites. Mining up the last of the ferrite dust that I needed and then this happened. I guess it's not a rock, it's mostly a rock. Oh well, might as well kill it I suppose. I mean, I guess it's not space homicide if it's a rock, am I right? Mind up a half decent amount of ferrite dust, let's get this scanner sorted. There are a few other things you can build in there like a personal shield or a bolt caster, you're not going to have to worry about that right now. Once you ping with your scanner, you're going to notice that H's are for dihydrogen, you're going to notice Na for sodium, and C plus for carbon. That makes finding these elements so much easier. As of now, I've farmed up a half decent amount of carbon as well as ferrite dust, but we are going to need a bunch of this dihydrogen right here in order to make rocket fuel as well as life support jellies. In the beginning, you can't ever have too many dihydrogen crystals, trust me. While you're out exploring the world, you're going to run across these green damaged containers here. Definitely save the rust, you can turn that into ferrite dust here in a bit. Unfortunately, you won't be able to loot the cylinders until you get your Atlas Volume 1 pass. Other things you might find in this area, well, you're going to find yellow boxes and white boxes. Yellow ones will have random loot and the white ones will heal your hit points. If you're hard up for oxygen, there will always be four plants right next to your banged up ship. There is almost always a cave system right next to your crashed ship, so I'm going to scan all this cobalt in here, mine it up, as well as this cave marrow. Cave marrow can actually be turned directly into sodium. You might run across these humming sacks inside will be Albion Pearls, which are actually worth a little bit of money, so you might as well loot them up. In most cases, there will be carbon as well as ferrite dust spawns down in the cave. Makes it very, very easy to scarf up those resources without getting totally and completely wrecked by the elements outside. And if you find these hazardous flora inside of a cave, buck them down with extreme prejudice. They will give you sodium as well as oxygen. Once you're ready to start repairing your ship, click on the red glowing orb. Now I am going to skip quite a bit of any of these interactions because it will contain storyline and I do not want to spoil that for you. Once you hop into your ship, the automatic repair protocol quest will take over. You'll be informed that your pulse engine as well as your launch thrusters are totally and completely destroyed and will need repairs. 
the only thing you won't be able to repair all the way is going to be your pulse engine that is going to require a hermetic seal and the hermetic seal is the quest we're going to have to go on and discover before we can actually make one now there are a couple things we can repair before we head up for the hermetic seal all we need to do is make a metal plating as well as a dihydrogen jelly we can do that right now the jelly will only take 40 dihydrogen and the metal plate itself only takes 50 ferrite dust the hermetic seal though is a totally and completely different story if we don't go out and find it we're never ever going to take off from this planet slap the plate in the jelly in there but what about this pure ferrite how are we going to be able to get that it's actually quite simple just hop out of your ship you're going to need to create something which is called the portable refiner and of course it's going to take a metal plate as well as 30 oxygen to create one of these once you've placed your portable refiner you can just interact with it and once you interact with it you will need to add some fuel to it in order to actually refine anything you can now toss your ferrite dust in there and press begin it'll now turn all that ferrite dust into pure ferrite now we only need 50 so we'll probably stop it right around there remember when i said you could turn marrow bulb into sodium well there you go let's slap that 50 pure ferrite in there now we have our launch thrusters completely repaired as early as you can you want to make sure you wean yourself off needing a bunch of oxygen and sodium to keep yourself alive and that's going to mean you're going to be wanting to make life support jellies as well as ion batteries now as life support gels only take dihydrogen as well as carbon so they're super easy to make ion batteries will take cobalt as well as ferrite dust and of course ferrite dust is super easy to get but cobalt only spawns in caves so keep that in mind Early on, I try to save all this sodium for my ship's shield, so I like to make at least 10 ion batteries for my own personal use. I spent a few minutes farming up some dihydrogen crystals. Now we should have plenty of dihydrogen in order to make these jellies, so we can finally have a nice stack of these life support gels. Once you have a stash of ion batteries and life support gels, well, No Man's Sky gets so much easier. This even includes playing in permadeath. Time to turn some of that rusted metal I looted into ferrite dust. Once you hop back into your ship for the second time, the Hermetic Seal quest will begin. Whenever you are doing your main quest in No Man's Sky, you're going to notice that the marker is always that red diamond shape with the white symbol on the inside. It's always going to direct you where you need to go. After this interaction, you're going to get a planetary chart. If you click on it, it's actually going to show you the location where you need to go to find the Hermetic Seal. While you're up really high in the air, if you see another building that's closer than the one that's marked, you can go there to get the Hermetic Seal. Not long after you leave your ship location to find the Hermetic Seal, you're going to get a weather warning. Now, this storm doesn't fool around, so if you don't have enough sodium or ion batteries, you can get yourself into a bit of trouble. Phew, that was a close one. I almost had to actually use an ion battery. We'll check out what this damaged machinery has in a bit after we recharge our hazard protection. In order to get your Hermetic Seal blueprint, you just need to click on the Hollow Archive here. Once you complete a little bit of the storyline, congratulations, you now have the Hermetic Seal blueprint. So I hit the scanner and noticed a purple looking icon. That's actually a memory glyph. That will teach you the words of the species that controls this system. Each one of these you find will teach you one single word. So chances are, if you want to learn their language, you're going to need to find a whole bunch of these. Or at least talk to other aliens and practice your dialogue with them. Made it back to my newbie ship, and it's going to tell me right away that my pulse engines are totally wrecked. Yeah, it's like I know that. You just sent me on a quest to get the Hermetic Seal. There you go. It's all fixed up. Your launch thrusters will have 50% fuel when you get them repaired, but you definitely want to make more. Now, each one will take a metal plating and a little bit of dihydrogen. Before you take off, make sure you have at least a thousand carbon as well as ferrite dust. Have at least a couple hundred sodium for your ship's shields. Make sure you have about 50 cobalt. You're going to make a bunch of money with that later. And definitely make sure your life support gels and ion batteries are sorted. Once you do that, you are free to leave the planet or moon's atmosphere. Once you find an asteroid field, which doesn't take you very long, you're going to be doing one of two things. There is the Awakenings quest, which you're going to have to complete three different things. It basically teaches you how to fly your ship. After that, you will be destroying all of these asteroids around you. It's going to give you gold, sometimes platinum and silver. 
you'll also get tritium. Tritium is what you need to make your pulse engine go anywhere, so definitely don't run out of tritium. I will usually do this for about 10 minutes tops. This will give me enough tritium, silver, and gold that I need to complete our quest here in just a little bit as well as a little bit of loot that I can sell at the space station in order to buy microprocessors, which will help us build our hyperdrive. When you're doing this, you're gonna get a lot of gold nuggets as well as hyperclusters, and sometimes you get something really cool, like I'm not even supposed to have antimatter yet. Well, I only ended up doing this for about five minutes, so I really hope I have enough gold and silver later. You will be building a base soon, so take this opportunity to scan the planets around you to see if any of them are actually pretty cool. Answering the signal will give you a set of planetary coordinates where you need to go in order to unlock the terrain manipulator as well as the base computer. Oh man, why couldn't it be on the Paradise Planet? As you approach the signal source, this can be done in one of two ways. You can either, you know, like land right next to the signal source. This is actually going to piss off all the fat cells in your body if you do it this way. Once you hop out of your ship, use your analysis visor and you kind of look around in directions. That right there means it's straight ahead of me. And you guessed it, time to piss off our fat cells because I have to run all the way there. Shut up, fat cells. We got a little bit of work to do. Now, this is an irradiated planet, and an irradiated planet, if it has water, you have a very, very good chance that some of these plants in the water will have oxygen as its secondary drop, and that right there is the exact thing we need to happen in order to make a whole boat ton of money in just a little bit. Oh yeah, we're fixing to be rich. At the quest location, now these save in chart beacons right here will actually create a save which is pretty handy when you're not nearby your ship. And that's what you're looking for, a piece of damaged machinery. So basically just find a piece of damaged machinery right next to that signal source and you know, that's probably exactly where you need to go. Don't piss off your fat cells. In order to build your base computer, you will need chromatic metal, and in order to get that, you're going to need to be able to mine some copper. That means getting the terrain manipulator completely sorted. Found ourselves a copper deposit. Now, see, I mined a whole bunch of it on accident. You want to make sure you're using the smallest bubble possible before you even start to mine. Mining with the smallest bubble possible will give you the most resources, although mining with the big gigantic bubble is way faster, you just won't get very much of the resource. Pressing R a bunch of times will make it the smallest bubble, and if you press T a whole bunch, it will grow it to the largest bubble possible. Yeah, when you're mining, always use the small bubble though. The easiest way to find a copper deposit near you is to use your analysis visor, find the deposit, then tag it. Once you tag it, you can run there. Basically got it all mined up. The other thing you're going to want to be doing is looking for buried technology modules. Those can also be found in the analysis visor and you can tag it and just run right for them. Well, this one was so close we didn't even need the analysis visor to find it. And you can just dig it up with the terrain manipulator, then go over there and loot it. Each time you loot one of these buried technology modules, you will receive between one and three salvage data. You're really hoping to get three because that's totally win. Another easy source for buried technology is to find damaged machinery. There's almost always one buried nearby. See what I mean? We're right here by the damaged machinery and there it is. There's the buried technology right near it. We will need these salvage data to build a teleporter, a battery, and some solar panels, things like that. So you're going to need a lot of those. The other thing is, though, it's like a double-edged sword. They're actually worth quite a bit, so you can sell them for money if you have any extra. Whenever I'm hunting for salvage data, I will always hit up these damaged machineries just because I like to get a bunch of free nanites. No, back to the grind. Oh, there's a life form down there. FYI, I am totally screwing the pooch right now. I'm getting caught up in how awesome it'd be to live on a paradise planet. And here's another one with star bulbs on it. Just because there is water on the surface of a paradise planet does not mean, and in most cases, will not have oxygen as the secondary drop. So yeah, wonderful planet. Sucks if you want to farm a whole bunch of oxygen to make a bunch of money. Building next to a minor settlement would actually be pretty cool. There's a landing pad outside. There's a multi-tool cabinet right here. Although it does kind of suck. There's actually a galactic trade terminal behind me. I'm going to grab these nanites really quick. 
I could interact with this alien here, and if I answer the question correctly, he might give me something. But I can't actually give you multi-tools, in this case he's going to teach me a word. Before you talk to the guy in the back, you're going to need a bunch of nanites. So open up your discoveries tab, then click on the correct planet that has all your discoveries on it, then start cashing them in. Before you upload anything, you can rename it if you like, and if anybody ever visits that planet ever in the future, it will be that name that you made it. Sadly, even if you find all the flora, you will not get a gigantic bonus of nanites. That's a bummer. Fauna, on the other hand, is a totally and completely different story. If you, like, find all the animals on a planet or moon, well, you're gonna get a huge bonus of nanites. Each animal you upload will give you five nanites, but it realistically, it is all about that nanite bonus right there, and we just got hooked up totally fat. Minerals are basically just like the flora. You're not gonna get a bonus even if you find them all, and they're only worth three per upload. When you talk to the guy in the back, you can either purchase components or blueprints. Now, every single one of these components he sells, except for maybe the Hermetic Seal, is extremely useful to your gameplay. If you have enough nanites, you're definitely going to want to grab the Advanced Mining Laser. If you can, try to get the Teleport Receiver, Waveform Recycler, as well as the Shield Lattice. You can get the Barrel Ionizer too, although at this point I'm basically wasting my nanites. If you don't find a Miner Outpost early on, don't worry about it too much because you can get all these upgrades in the Space Anomaly like in about an hour from now. Let's pawn off some of our craps here on the Galactic Trade Terminal. That Sentinel Bounty Map is actually pretty cool, but it's not as cool as 3200 right now, so I'm just going to sell it. See what I'm talking about? That salvage data is actually worth a lot, although we can't sell it. We need that in just a bit. Time to sell all the stuff in my exosuit as well as my ship. Now, generally, I wouldn't do this to y'all, but you need to see where I'm getting my starting money from. Before I build my first base, I want to get a few more buried technology modules, and since I found these two damaged machineries together, I'm willing to bet there's probably going to be some buried technology like Dude, is something attacking me? Alright, looks like I got a scumbag coming in. Let's put him down. Yep, take that, bro. Just, like, leave me alone. Go bite somebody else. You got totally hooked up with nanites on that second machine here. Now let's go over and talk to this cliff and earn ourselves another word. The other thing you might run across when you're out there looking for buried technology, well, sometimes they're not so buried. They're just kind of floating around in the sky. It makes them really easy to find. Past me is all like, you know how cool it would be to build a base on that deserted island over there? When future me is like, bro, you're totally wasting your time. You're literally about to go build another base back on that planet you were just at. Before we build our base computer, we will need to turn some of this copper here into chromatic metal. Now, if you want to take the easy way out, you can destroy your rocket launcher inside your ship. It will give you enough chromatic metal to build a base computer. That is, if you are just far too lazy to mine up the copper yourself. I guess plopping the base computer down here is as good a place as any. Now, once you plop it down, you will want to interact with it. In just a little bit, it's going to give you the option to claim this base location. Now, you're going to be able to do that as long as nobody else has a base built in this local area right here. Interacting with the base computer one more time will give you a little bit of storyline as well as a bunch of base building parts. You can't have the best start to No Man's Sky Singularity without an epic box base. And I mean seriously, I don't care who you are, you probably like boxes. The master plan for today is to finish this box, complete our quest up to the point where we can get to the space anomaly, Make ourselves a half-decent amount of money, and then buy ourselves an S-Class ship. Oh yeah, and when you start building your base, there's going to be an epic storm, so make sure you're prepared for that. If you do get yourself into trouble, don't sweat it too much. All you have to do is start placing a roof on your base, and once you're kind of under the ledge, you're not going to be taking any more hazard damage anymore. Unfortunately, I used up all my pure ferrite, so I wasn't even actually able to make a door on my base, so yeah, well, I can get that sorted right now. After you get your base sealed up, interact with your base computer, and it will give you the construction research unit. Once you place that, you're actually going to be able to buy some really useful blueprints. That is, if you did the preemptive strike on farming up a bunch of those buried technology modules, because you will need at least 14 salvage data at this point. 
First, you'll want to place your base teleport module. Right next to it, place your biofuel reactor. This step is actually optional. You don't need a battery, but you know, might as well place two of them. If you're just gonna go with the teleporter and biofuel reactor, you can wire it just like that. If you are gonna run with batteries in your setup, instead hook it to your lead battery and then take your lead battery and plug it into the secondary. Now take that secondary battery and plug it directly into the teleporter. In order to keep your batteries charged, you will wanna place at least one to two solar panels on the very top of your box base. Finishing up your wiring will be pretty easy. Just wire one of these solar panels into the other one and then take that main power line and plug it directly into your very first battery. Once your circuit is completed, it is now time to fuel up the biofuel reactor. And you can do that with carbon condensed carbon or oxygen, but that would be a huge waste of oxygen. So instead you're gonna wanna use carbon. Now you can change the stack size. You wanna put the smallest amount you possibly can on there. After you do this, the base computer archives is going to want to chat with you again. It's going to send you to the space station to talk to three different aliens. Now, if you were lucky enough to find the space station before this point, you would be able to teleport directly there right now. The majority of young travelers to No Man's Sky will have absolutely no idea how to find the space station before this point in the game. So, yeah, we'll just fly up there like all the other travelers would have to do because it's a long drawn out process trying to explain how to find it early. Once you're here, hit up the Galactic Trade Terminal. You're going to want to make sure you have a total of five microprocessors. I ended up finding a couple of them in green crates earlier. This is actually an amazing find in our very first system. This is what is known as a Traveler Traveler. The first time you interact with them, they will expose you to a bit of storyline, so I'm not going to share that. But the second time, give them 100 nanites, and they will show you their grave location. Before we head there, let me put on the last suit I'm ever going to wear. Ah, that's perfect. Now I just wish I had a pair of black sunglasses. Yeah, I almost forgot about talking to the three aliens before we headed out. That would have been freaking awkward. Just make sure when you're talking to these three random aliens that you choose totally at random that none of them are inside of booths because if you talk to any one of them about the travelers, well, they're going to freak out and they'll never talk to you again. Seriously, finding a traveler spawn on a space station is exceptionally rare. I'm surprised we found him this early in the playthrough. When you talk to the Traveler, he will expose you to a little bit of the storyline, so I'm going to skip that. Just extract the glyph, and if you get all 16 of those, you can go pretty much anywhere you want in the universe. You also receive another useful piece of technology if you consume the memory fragment. Heck yeah, and we got the advanced mining laser. That's a really, really good upgrade. Now that we have the advanced mining laser installed into our multi-tool, we won't have to go out there and farm ferrite dust and then use the portable refiner to turn it into pure ferrite. We can just mine it right up. After you talk to those three aliens, your base computer is going to have another mission for you to go on. It's going to tell you that there is a signal acquired as well as life signs detected. You need to go there. Once you arrive near the location, you can either land at the distress signal, which is going to piss off all your fat cells, or you can look for a gigantic crash freighter. Interacting with the red globe here will expose you to some more storyline as well as unlock the ability to create a hyperdrive. This is that moment where having five microprocessors is going to come in clutch, and unfortunately, <sighs> I gotta go mine some more copper. All right, this is glorious. I just finished up mining a whole bunch of copper. There's the hole behind me, but looky here. We just hooked up with another 2,250 in nanite bonuses. Cha-ching! With the rest of this chromatic metal, we now have our hyperdrive sorted. In order to fuel this beast, we're going to need to head back up into orbit, do a ping, and then look for the antimatter trace. When you get close to the signal source, what you're looking for is an abandoned building. There it is right there. There's going to be some eggs and things laying around on the outside of it. We're going to be farming those up as well. Before I just like run up in there and hook up with the antimatter blueprint, I'm going to do a little prep for our farming here. Now what we want to do is build some diagonal tunnels underneath of these eggs here. We don't want to use the giant bubble, but we want to use something that's about in between. When you do this, you want to do this to each set of the egg clusters that you find around the building. Now, I've done every single one of them. I showed you the first one. Now, here's the last one. i got to do a little bit of touch-up work, but let's head inside now. 
There's going to be an ugly looking piece of machinery with a bunch of slime stuck to it. That's what you want to interact with. Doing so will expose you to a little bit more storyline as well as give you the ability to create antimatter. In order to create a warp cell, you will need to create an antimatter housing. Now, technically, I'm not supposed to have antimatter already. So we're going to construct one for posterity. And once you have an antimatter as well as an antimatter housing, you can create the warp cell. And once you have one made up, you might as well just stuff it right into your hyperdrive. Now get yourself down in the hole and pull out your mining laser. What you're going to be doing is shooting those whispering egg sacs and then looting up the larval cores that roll down to you. Now don't worry about the monsters getting you. As long as you used about a medium sized bubble, definitely not the large size, they will not spawn underground or go under there to get you. When you farm up all those larval cores, it's time to be a freaking space ninja. What you're going to do is jump and fly out and get right into that next hole before the monsters stomp a mud hole into you. If you want to spend a little extra time, you can connect all these little underground tunnels together. Then you don't have to be a ninja. I farmed up all the larval cores and ended up with 25. Should have had 26, but I was an idiot and accidentally shot one for too long and it died. These things are worth a heck of a lot of money or nanites, depending on what you want. Now that you have warp fuel, it's time for your very first interstellar travel. So just open up your galaxy map. Now we already are in a Viking system. Technically, we want to find either a Gek or a Korvax system to go to. And it looks like, well, we're probably just going to go with this Gek system right here. Congratulations, traveler. You have explored your very first system. Well, you haven't explored it quite yet. I'm sure you'll probably get around to doing that later. You're going to get another message containing some storyline, except the guidance is going to actually show you where the fuel source is located. Just like before, you can choose to either be a skinny or a fat traveler. Definitely going to be a fat traveler. Landing right next to the alien looking monolith is what you're going to want to be doing at this stage. And there's always going to be three glyphs around this thing. So just scarf up all the words you can. Definitely helps to understand what they're saying. Head over and interact with the monolith, you're going to get, you know, more storyline, as well as a free warp cell. Remember all those larva cores? Well, I could turn one of those into 50 nanites, but since I'm broke as a joke right now, we're just going to sell them for a bunch of space cheddar. Every single time you land on a new space station, always take the opportunity to upgrade either a cargo or a technology slot. Then it dawned on me, I forgot to do this in my main system, so we might as well just upgrade a technology slot this time. And in order to do that, you just click on one of the ones that are blank and then hit the upgrade slot. Since I have some nanites to burn, might as well see what kind of modules he has for sale. And wow, he has a movement module. We're definitely going to be scooping that one up. Let's get that glorious upgrade plopped in there. Now, there is something about No Man's Sky. You will get a bigger bonus if you put like items right next to each other. Notice how they light up yellow like that. Now, I'm going to do the same thing with my oxygen tank as well as that hazard protection. Let's get the oxygen recycler in there. It only costs a little bit of oxygen, and I have to admit, I should have told you all to do that a whole heck of a long time ago. And with that shield lattice installed, well, we're going to have more environmental protection now as well. Now technically that guy's sold out and you're not going to be able to buy another movement module unless you do something. Now, hop in and out of your ship, this is going to create a restore point. Now head over to your options menu and then just reload your restore point. Doing so will replenish the module stock on these vendors. And you're always going to want to have three of the exact same type of S-Class module to put into your stuff. It is worth noting that if you try to put a fourth one in there, it will overload the circuit. Once you hop back into your ship and flatten to space, you're going to have another awakenings message. This time it's going to give you a location for the stranger's coordinates, which is basically code for you find a crash ship, fix it up, and make a ton of money. At this point, if you're a skinny traveler, it's your own daggone fault. You're choosing not to land right next to these places I'm showing you. Before you fool around with the ship, head over to the signal beacon and repair it. It's going to take sodium as well as chromatic metal, something that you should have plenty of at this point. At the very end, you're going to receive a useful piece of technology, and that's the Pulse Splitter. That's my very, very favorite weapon for the multi-tool. This ship will actually respawn over time at about 4 or 5 game hours, so you might as well just mark it with a save beacon or build a base teleporter here, because you can come back and, you know, get it again. 
Let's check out this hauler and see how beat down she is. Now, you can repair each one of those slots if you want, but ultimately you just need to repair the launch thrusters as well as the pulse engine to get it up to the space station. Now, if you do decide to repair any of those slots, she's going to be worth even more before you scrap her, so it's totally up to you. Either fix it and get more money, or don't fix it and, you know, make a half-decent amount of money. Our trip back up to the space station is going to be interrupted by another space telephone call, this time from a dude named Nada. Once you get done chewing the fat with the guy, he is going to summon his super duper mega space anomaly and you're welcome to land on board whenever you want. And scrapping ships are super duper easy, you're just going to come over to the ship terminal over here and then ask it to claim the scrap for your ship. Well, this one's worth over 4 million. This was a glorious find. Now, it's going to give me some parts as well as modules that I can sell. Head over to any of the vendors, click Purchase Upgrade Modules, then click the Sell tab. You can now sell all those modules. Unfortunately, you can only sell the modules for nanites. So you'll have to come over to one of these ship guys or sell on a galactic terminal in order to get rid of those parts that the ship was made out of. Before you actually land on the anomaly, just make sure you have enough salvage data on hand, so I'm going to be farming these buried technology modules just for a little bit before we head back on up there. Heading over to the space anomaly now like a gigantic space weenie, I have a pirate chasing me and I just don't feel like fighting him because, you know, I'm lazy. Not because I'm afraid I might get killed. Heading inside the Space Anomaly for the very first time is actually pretty awesome. Might as well just have my ship into third person mode as I fly in here as well. And when you come in here, you're going to be greeted by a whole bunch of travelers. This is like the community link area for everyone to hook up and get together. Follow the purple icon up to the top deck. This is where you're going to find Nada. After you chat with him for a bit, he's going to send you on another quest to talk to four other aliens, starting with Polo. Head downstairs, you'll want to be talking to a tree-looking dude named Helios. He is going to want all of your planet's data. Unfortunately, at this stage of the game, you're not going to be scanning a lot of planets, so you're not going to get a lot of nanites either. Right across from him is a dude named Ares. He is going to want all of your milestone data, and at this point, you're probably fixing to get hooked up just like me with a whole bunch of nanites. Follow the purple icon to the back room upstairs. You're going to be talking to Selene. She is the Anomaly's exosuit vendor. Take the opportunity to snag up the hazmat gauntlets. Definitely going to want to get the personal refiner. And then you can also get the neural stimulator. You'll want to check out Hyperion. He is the starship module dealer. Oh yeah, probably going to drop a lot of nanites on this guy, starting with the economy scanner. Definitely going to be getting my favorite weapon, the Positron Ejector. And then the Fragment Supercharger. Might as well snag up the ablative armor. You will most definitely want to get the efficient thrusters and the launch auto charger. The cadmium drive, emerald drive, and indium drive are totally optional. And whenever you pull out the space anomaly in a new system, you can come over here and upgrade a cargo and technology slot if you feel like it. If you want multi-tool upgrades on the anomaly, EOS is your dude. Generally, I don't bother hitting him up until after I get myself a brand new multi-tool, but I might as well just buy these amplified cartridges to go with my pulse splitter. If you're needing any exocraft upgrades, you can talk to Percy's here. Chances are I won't even be using an exocraft in this playthrough, but it doesn't hurt to get yourself a mining laser as well as the advanced mining laser. Hit up the construction research station. Navigate over to the technologies page and get yourself the medium refiner. You also want to get the large refiner. Snag the galactic terminal. Head over to the transport tab and buy yourself the Romer Geobay. And you most definitely want the electrical cloaking device unit. Since we've been to a Viking as well as a Gex system, we might as well go to a Corvax system. And since we're here, accidentally landed on the space station on purpose to upgrade one of my backpack slots again. This time it's going to be a technology. Making a very bigly mistake right now buying this Photon Cannon module. I'll let you know here in a little bit why. In a nutshell, even with upgrades, this Photon Cannon is no match for the Positron Ejector. So I've only been to three systems and I found another Traveler here in the back room. This is absolutely crazy. Usually you can go from space station to space station and like hardly ever find them. 
Time to consume the memory fragment, and instead of getting something good, we got a C-Class module. I was literally about to land on the space station, then head back to our base, when I noticed that this freighter convoy, like, popped right in, right next to the front door of the space station, so we might as well check out what he has. The ultimate drop that we're looking for is what is known as a salvaged... Oh my lord. A salvaged frigate module, so we might as well just, like, mow this dude's compartments down and loot everything that he has. Don't worry, doing this isn't going to get your tune in any kind of trouble, and as long as you don't kill one of the little ships, well, you're not going to lose any faction either, you're just going to get a bunch of free loot. Landing on the space station will also clear aggro, so when you fly back out, everything's going to be cool. But like seriously, it must be the luckiest traveler, I cannot believe we found a salvage frigate module on the very first try. When you get back to your base, hit up your base computer once again, it's going to have something really cool for you, which is called the storage container. You can plop your storage container right next to your base or on the inside if you have the room. Here's the thing though, it is not easily used without power, so you're going to want to run a cable from your battery, just plug it right into the storage container. Cha-ching, there you go, now you have plenty of room to stash things. Time to start stage one of our money making. We're gonna wanna throw down three medium refiners and two large refiners. Unfortunately, I do not have enough supplies on hand to finish up the other refineries. We'll get those sorted in just a sec. We're gonna be refining two different elements to make money here. First, we're gonna start with cobalt and we're gonna mix it with oxygen, turning it into ionized cobalt. If you want to make even more profits in the ionized cobalt, what you want to do is get your hands on either some salt or some chlorine, and you want to mix that with oxygen. When your refineries run out of the main element, just take it out of the output, put it back into the input, and start processing again. Hopped over to the space station, I want to grab up all the elements I need to make the rest of my refineries, as well as sell a tiny bit of this ionized cobalt, as well as chlorine. Now the chlorine was worth more, even though we had less. Really hoping this dude has some chromatic metal as well, some dehydrogen jellies, and wow, man, the mother load of exactly what we need. I'm just gonna pretty much buy all this crap, I think. Now I have all the elements I need to put down the rest of these refineries, starting with the large refineries. I'm probably gonna move the other little ones and stuff a medium right here. Checking the waters a few feet away from my base just to see if I can farm up any oxygen here on the paradise planet, and it's looking like it's gonna suck. Time to head back to that irradiated planet, and besides, I really, really like the look of all those islands surrounded by a bunch of water, it's gonna be great. Before you start using this farming method, just make sure you hop out of your ship and go down there and scan every single plant that's down there, or you're just gonna get the first element, which in most cases is gonna be carbon, cytophosphate, and kelp sacks, as well as salt. Ultimately, what you're looking for is at least one plant to have oxygen, but I'm telling you, it gets even better and better when two or three plants have oxygen. Raking in a decent amount of oxygen, then a few minutes later, some pirates attacked me. Really hope this doesn't happen to you, but it seems like my starting system has a really, really high conflict level. I wouldn't be surprised if they're at war, but, you know, gonna be mooching as much as I possibly can before these guys start shooting at me, then I'm gonna get the heck on out of here. At this point, I'm basically past the stage of being irritated, getting attacked by pirates constantly when I'm trying to do things, so yeah, time to break a boot off in their space boats. Even though you're a brand new traveler to No Man's Sky and in a complete and total newbie ship, don't shy away from combat, because realistically, these guys suck and you can beat them up even in a noob ship, so don't worry about it. Back in the base with a little under 7,000 oxygen. Now, that's not too bad for the photon cannon, but, uh... Really should have put that positron ejector in there because I'd probably have four to five times as much. That's crazy. Now, Cobalt does have its place. We will be making tons of money in the last stages of this playthrough, but technically, you really should be focusing on only making chlorine at this stage. FYI, you can turn kelp sacks into oxygen if you need just a little bit more. There we go, everything's refined down, and even though I have more ionized cobalt, can about guarantee we're going to be making more on the chlorine, so let's head over to the space station. Looks like my ionized cobalt has a minus 2.6 demand, and the chlorine is at a 0.5, now you can shop around and find a better price if you want. Back out here farming for oxygen, and I swear, if I get attacked one more time, I'm just going to build a base here. Probably going to build one anyway, just out of convenience, because it'll make these trips way faster. 
Well, the heck with it. While we're at it, might as well use the economy scanner and find a trading post here on this planet. Heck, I'm just gonna build right next to this trading post. This is gonna be totally sweet. When I get enough money, I'll probably just hop over here and buy an S-Class exotic or just a regular S-Class ship. You got the epic box base done here on location. It's gonna make these trips way, way easier. Now, I also have a galactic trade terminal here. Now, I don't recommend that you constantly try to sell your ionized cobalt or chlorine here, but I do think I will pawn off some of my cytophosphate just for reasons. I'm pretty sure you have the refining and farming process done, like the back of your hand at this point, so we're just going to go through me selling the last four loads until I get up to my target amount, which is about 30 million. As you can see, by this point, I have stopped wasting my time selling ionized cobalt, and we're sticking strictly with chlorine, which is the smart way to go. 30 million should be just about right to get myself into an entry-level S-Class ship. I've got a pocket full of money. Looks like I found an S-Class ship, although I did see an R2-D2 model. Probably gonna get that. Oh my god, bro, I'm totally freaking out. It looks like an S-Class exotic squid. Where the hell are you going, bro? Aren't you gonna come down in here and land? No! Dude, that was wrong on so many levels. This is Traveler Hawks reporting live from the conflict zone. Looks like uh, pirates like attacking these places now. Now take that, you daggone scum. I don't even know if my laser beam can reach that far, but I guess I got their attention. They can't hit a broadside of a barn. Good, good. Let the R2-D2 unit S-Class ship flow through you. I had another sighting of that exotic squid, but he just kind of flew around and then took off and went away. What a scumbag for being a tease. Anyways, not going to complain because I really, really like this R2-D2 unit ship here. Seriously, don't do this. I'm big dumb. You know, if you're going to trade your ship and at least destroy everything in there before you do it, because they're not kidding, you will lose everything. Eh, it's no big deal. This time we're mining for oxygen with the positron ejector, so I'm only going to have to do this for about 10 or 15 minutes to get a whole boatload of oxygen. No, oh yeah, when I say a boatload, I'm not even kidding. We even got a bunch of cytophosphate and salt, but look at all that oxygen we have now. Earlier we were focusing mostly on chlorine, as well as a little bit of ionized cobalt, but now we're going to strictly focus on turning all of our cobalt and ionized cobalt into even more cobalt. Eventually, you're going to totally and completely run out of oxygen, so it's all about turning that ionized cobalt right back into cobalt. Before you set out to sell a ridiculous amount of cobalt, make sure you stash a little bit back at your base. Even though I have a lot, I should probably have about four more stacks. We will be warping to quite a few star systems in order to make a bunch of money, upgrade our technology and cargo slots, as well as find the remainder of our glyphs, so I will need to make a whole bunch of warp cells. I will be upgrading my ship's hyperdrive, so 15 is actually quite a lot, because I won't be using very much fuel. Let me show you how we're going to make our money doing an economy crash at all of the galactic terminals on every space station we visit. Each full stack of cobalt that you sell will lower the economy by about 10%, so if you sell 8 of them, you're going to totally crash the economy. And all you have to do is just buy it all back up at a hugely discounted price, and when you get to a new star system later, you'll do the exact same thing. Once you have crashed the cobalt market, you can head over to any of the little ship guys, and they will also sell the cobalt at a discounted rate if you want to buy more. The more cobalt you have in the beginning will definitely dictate how much money you end up with at the end of this video. Time to get our warp on again. Now, I like to go to only wealthy systems. You don't have to do this. Now, if you want to, you can just click expand on any one of these systems, and it'll tell you the type of economy it is. Now, that one was satisfactory. That one's booming right there. That's actually a wealthy system, so we're going to go there. It is worth mentioning, in order to see those economy types, you will need to have an economy scanner installed on your ship. One of the very first things I like to do once I arrive in the system is just to summon the Space Anomaly because we will be hopping onto that too right after we hit up the space station. There's no real way to say this other than just to spit it out. This part of the playthrough is going to be a real grind. I'm going to be doing this for about four to five hours straight. The very first thing I'm going to do is come over here and upgrade my exosuit slot, either a technology or a cargo slot. I do recommend that you upgrade some of your technology early because you're going to be upgrading that too. You'll want to check the exosuit as well as the ship vendor here to see if they have any useful S-Class modules for sale and 
that actually sounds like an exotic S-Class ship that just flew in, so let's check it out. And we do have a little over 23 million. I mean, it's possible I can afford this, and it is in my colors, blue and gold. So, yeah, hoping for the best right here, although there's a really good chance we can't afford this because I haven't sold my Cobalt yet. Of course. So where was I? Oh yeah, checking module. So we're back at the ship module guy, and it looks like they have a hyperdrive module. I am most definitely going to be getting three of these. That's going to save us a whole bunch of warp fuel. We'll just plop that right in there. Mm-hmm. Check the multi-tool cabinet as well. Sometimes you'll get lucky, but most of the time it's going to suck. Now head back into this back room. What we're mostly looking for is travelers, or you can sell your cobalt here too. Now there's going to be a whole boat ton of these little colored globes. Like this one's blue, some of them are orange. There's little black discs and things too. Scarf all those up, because it's going to be a bunch of nanites as well as navigational data, and you're going to need that. I'm checking the other side for travelers as well, and it doesn't look like we see any on this space station. We'll have to check the next one. Time to make some money by crashing the economy with cobalt. Now, it is worth mentioning that you can do this with any item that the Galactic Trade Terminal sells. As long as it is already there for sale, you can crash that market. The main reason why I choose Cobalt to do this, well, it's quite simple. Every single Galactic Terminal and every single system will sell Cobalt. Even if I found a traveler and got their gravestone location, I generally land on the space anomaly now, then head to the back and upgrade either a technology or a cargo slot. Unfortunately, we can't sell any of our cobalt here, but we can upgrade two slots per system, and that's totally win. You know, the second that I hit the warp button, I realized I forgot to upgrade my hyperdrive some more. Not ah, well, just gonna land here and hope to find that upgrade at this space station. The exosuit vendor had nothing really, but this guy right here, this guy has my hyperdrive module, and unfortunately, we don't have enough nanites, so I'm gonna have to scrap some ships in order to get those. Bummer, no travelers in the back room. Might as well just come out here and scarf up all these nanites and navigational data, because when there are these tables like this, they are freaking everywhere. On this economy crash, we're starting with a little over 36 million, and we're definitely going to be ending up with, I would guess, probably about 50-ish million once we end up buying all this stuff back. At this point, I'm not going anywhere until we can buy at least two more of those hyperdrive modules, and in order to make a bunch of nanites really quickly, we're just going to buy a whole bunch of B, A, and S class ships that aren't too expensive, and just turn around and scrap them for nanites. Once you have bought the ship, don't make the mistake of running over there and scrapping it. Definitely salvage any of the things you can salvage inside because you're going to get a bunch of wireling lubes, sodium, as well as chromatic metal. Now, there's another ship. Well, that one's definitely in our purchasing range, and so is that one too. We're basically paying 6.4 million units for this ship. Now, keep in mind, once you scrap a ship, you're not going to get its full value. This time, we're only going to get 4.5 million back, but we will get modules we can sell for nanites. Ultimately, you're just trading your money for nanites. It goes without saying, the better ships that you can afford to scrap will mean the better modules that you'll have to sell. Spent a few minutes scrapping ships. Now, this is the second hyperdrive module I'm buying here, so I'm going to have all the hyperdrive modules I need for my ship to be totally and completely awesome. Let's move these upgrades around a little bit. Now, that configuration right there should give me the biggest bonus and save me the most amount of warp fuel. Another really cool side effect of scrapping ships is you'll get something that is called a storage augmentation. Never, ever sell those. With those augmentations, you can actually add cargo slots or technology slots to your ship, and it really, really helps to pimp your ship out as much as you possibly can, as quickly as you possibly can. And with every single cargo slot that you add to your ship will increase its value quite a bit. Before we head out to our next star system, you guessed it, stopping at the Anomaly to get another exosuit upgrade. Aw, oh, sweet. It looks like we're going to have our very first freighter encounter, which includes a battle with some pirates. First, we'll start out with a word of warning. When you're fighting these bad guys, do your very best not to shoot the freighter, or they're going to get pissed off at you. Next, if you just can't be bothered by doing combat because you're either afraid or just far too lazy, you can just land on the space station, hop in and out of your ship, then fly right back out here, and all the bad guys will be gone. 
I say scrape them off your boot, even though it'll take you a little more time to actually beat him up, it does feel good to teach a bad guy a lesson. Once all the attack ships have been defeated, you're going to get a message from the freighter's commander. They're going to ask you to come on board. They want to give you a reward for your outstanding service. The reward will range from, you know, giving you this freighter totally and completely free of charge or hooking you up with something else. You can scan the deck with your discovery scanner and see what type of freighter it is, and this one's an A-class. Now, if you want, you can inspect this freighter and then claim it as your very own for free, but I highly recommend you do not do this. Wait to get a capital ship for free instead. At this stage, what you should do is just request the payment. It'll give you some faction and some random minerals, nanites, and sometimes money. It's a way better deal because you're going to get a way better freighter later. Heck yeah, we found ourselves another traveler on the very next station. Time to hook him up with 100 nanites for his grave location so we can get his glyph. Definitely gonna hook it up with these shield modules as well as these pulse engine modules. Let's stuff that in there. Definitely need to upgrade my technology some more. Running out of nanites once again, but I was able to get three of those pulse engine modules. Finally made it to the Traveler's Grave location so we can extract another glyph, and unfortunately, I still need 13 more. That might take me a little while. After you play No Man's Sky for about 4-5 to five hours after your last freighter encounter, you're going to trigger your next freighter encounter with the capital ship. What I'll generally do when I get the second freighter encounter to spawn is immediately reload my restore point. Before I leave the space station or the anomaly, I always have a good habit of hopping in and out of my ship just in case for instances like this. I will then warp to a system or systems I've already explored in the past. Now the last system I originally had this in, it had the Super Star Destroyer version and I want to have the Sentinel version instead. The system we're in right now has the Sentinel version so I'm going to hop in and out of my ship to create a fresh restore point. We can now fly directly to the freighter and check out what it is, and we're not going to be bugged by any pirates. So just throwing it out there, because I probably should throw it out there. Doing this many, many, many times through many playthroughs, you're probably not going to get it on the first try. If you want to have the very, very, very best chance possible, you're going to want to be doing this in a rich economy or at a black market system. Those are the very best places to, you know, get an S-Class freighter quickly. Now since it is in an S-Class, it's time to reload the Restore Point. Once we reload, we can fly right back out there. Now don't freak out if you don't see it right away. Sometimes the freighter will change locations. You just gotta kinda find it and then fly right back over there. Do you really, really need to have an S-Class freighter? Well, you know, if you wanna be the best of the best, sir, then yes. But realistically, the difference between an A-Class max slot like this one right here and an S-Class isn't all that much, really. Oh, wow, so this is actually pretty when an exotic ship flew in right as I was checking the deck here. I wonder if it's going to fly in on the next time, too, because if it does, there's a really good chance I'll be able to buy this exotic when I do get this freighter in an S-Class. Well, the freighter sucked on this trip, but lo and behold, that S-Class exotic flew in once again, so now I'm feeling really, really good about being able to get this and the S-Class freighter all at the same time. It finally happened. We got this in an S-Class and, you know, it took me an hour and 15 minutes of reloading constantly to get there, but let's see if this S-Class exotic flies in now. Oh yeah, there she is. Let's go scarf her up. Now seriously, Traveler, just throwing it out there, this is an extremely rare and extremely lucky circumstance that I just found myself in. Don't expect this to happen to you on your playthrough, but if it does, well heck yeah, we both got really super lucky. Don't forget about your fat cells. Take the teleporter. Head up and talk to the captain. It is most definitely time to inspect as well as claim this freighter as our very own. And since it's our very first freighter, we just saved 178 million. Cha-ching! I pretty much have my exosuit fully upgraded, but we're still looking for travelers in order to get glyphs. At this stage of the game, after my second freighter encounter, I'm usually still looking for the glyph stone, so what I like to do is buy up all of the elements that I possibly can off all these little ship guys at every single space station that I visit. I will also be making tens of thousands of nanites at this time, so I'm going to be buying each one of these ships after I buy all their elements. 
Now this is totally up to you, but sometimes you're out here scrapping and you find some really nice S-Class ships and they always give you the storage augmentations each time you scrap them. So as long as you have the space cheddar available, you might as well do it. Maybe not with like haulers or something because they can get really expensive, but yeah. This fighter isn't too bad, so we'll just get it. Realistically though, at this stage of the game, losing 17 million in order to get guaranteed storage augmentations as well as three S-Class modules isn't really a very bad deal in itself. See what I mean? 75 million to buy one augmentation, the heck with that jazz, we're just gonna keep scrapping ships in order to get them because it's way, way better. Sweet, Space Cheddar 1's up to 64 cargo slots right now, you know it would be even more glorious? Spending just a little more time scrapping some ships, just enough time to get five more cargo slots, not six, not four, but five cargo slots. I reckon 69 is the perfect number of cargo slots, mm-hmm. The sucky part though, well, we still need seven more glyphs. Oh my god, why is it taking so long? Couple hours of gameplay, scrapped a lot of ships and every single system I visited, but we finally got all 16 glyphs. The next thing I need to do is stock up on a whole bunch of salvage data, so I'm gonna have to farm a bunch of these buried technology modules just for a little bit. When you get enough salvage data, head up to the Space Anomaly and hit up the Construction Research Station. You're going to want to head over to the Agricultural's Modules tab and then just start buying everything that I buy right now. Ultimately, you want all the grow stations as well as all the plants that you can possibly grow. I won't be planting all of them in this playthrough, but you will be planting some of them later down the road. You can do this next stage on your freighter or here at a trading post on a planetary surface. Both places will offer basically the same loot tables, and if you're going to be doing the quest that I'm going to show you here in a bit, do it in a Viking system, so buy a Viking dagger right now. You'll also want to be purchasing the plant fiber material here from all these ship guys. They're going to be offering a whole different variety. Each guy has kind of a different inventory. Just keep buying until you get everything you need. Now you can also get Mordite. Mordite is one of the things we really do need still. And you can get that just by bucking down animals if you want to. If you're not into space homicide to buck down all the animals in order to get Mordite, don't worry about it because Facium can actually be turned into Mordite. It's just more important that you get all of the materials that you see right here, probably minus the Mordite. Next, head over to any space station and then hit up the Stellar Cartographer. Before talking to him, make sure you bring navigational data because that's what it's going to cost to buy the exact chart right there. We want the alien cartographic data. Buy at least five of these. I'm just, I don't know why I bought ten, but I did. Using the chart is easy. You just plot your route and it will give you the location. You're hoping for a monolith. Man, we're lucky. That's exactly what we got. If you don't get a monolith, just hover or land near the location. Then plot another route on the chart until you get a monolith. Just throwing it out there, you can screw this up, so if you answer the riddle incorrectly, you will need to reload your autosave. But if you do answer it correctly, then you'll be able to actually ask for where the portal location is actually located. If you do end up doing this in a Viking system, this is where the monolith will actually ask you for a Viking dagger in order to give you the portal location. Once you know the portal's location, and I usually do this in my main system, I will always build a little base here with the teleporter to it. Finishing the final touches on my portal base here, now I'll be able to get back when I want to come back here. Let's go out to the portal and actually get it all charged up. We're fixing to go hook up with a really cool alien multi-tool, and not only is it cool, it's blue, yellow, and purple, so you know, gotta do it. Before you charge her up, make sure you have plenty of carbon, sodium, cobalt, as well as copper. Half the time I end up forgetting about the copper, then I gotta go out there and find it, or go teleport to my base to go get it. Now it's freaking on, we got her totally charged up, it's time to activate this portal, let's go hook up with that tool. If you'd like to get this multi-tool, pause it now, the last symbol is the triangle. I found this tool by watching a Beeblebum video, and oh yes, he makes great videos, as well as finds great multi-tools. This alien multi-tool is extremely easy to find, and you don't have to do anything special to make it spawn. You just need to go there and find it, which will be super easy with me showing you. You're going to hop right into your ship and fly directly straight up into the air from where the portal is located. You can do kind of a little hyperspace jump if you want to get there faster. That's totally up to you. 
once you get up high enough, you're going to look back down at the planet, and you're going to be wanting to look to the right side of the ring. There should be a couple com balls over there. Fly in the direction of the closest com ball. The one I chose right here is actually a base. The actual location we want is just to the right of us. Let's go check it out and hope I've not been sent on a total and complete wild goose chase, but I totally believe that that is the one up there on the hill right there. Yep, that's the one right there. There is a bunch of com balls around it as well. Somebody's got a base with a landing pad near it. Yep, definitely guessing this is the place. If you can see it right now, my little Viking guy has got goosebumps on top of his goosebumps. He's so freaking excited. This is actually a really good multi-tool. It has three superchargers right next to each other as well as just one off to the side. Yes, there are multi-tools that can be better than this one, but since you can have multiple multi-tools, I don't see anything wrong with me hooking up with a blue, yellow, and purple alien. I mean, really. When you get a new toy, you generally whip it out in front of your friends, am I right? Get back here, bros. I want to show you my new tool. Well, that was super duper quick and easy. Now let's finish up the last farming we're going to have to do in this entire playthrough. You can pretty much do this anywhere, but I like to do this in a black market system because generally the loot that drops here is better, even though our main goal really isn't to collect all this loot because quite frankly, we're basically space daddy warbucks right now. The main target loot that we're after is actually salvage frigate modules, which I did get earlier in the playthrough, like basically on accident. But now, we have to farm them for real, and don't shoot those little ships or you will lose faction. Once you have laid the total and complete smackdown on all the freighter modules out there, you can fly in here and decide to sell your stuff. It's actually better to go to a different system that isn't a black market system and sell the stuff there, but ultimately, you're trying to see how many salvage frigate modules you can get, and sometimes it takes a little bit to get a bunch of these salvage frigate modules. Bro, I spent like three hours out there farming those modules, reloading my save, farming my modules over and over again. We ended up with 57. That's just... I'm never gonna farm those things again, guys. It's just too much. And if you followed everything I've done up to this point, you've got all your plant fiber ready and you've bought all the extra elements that you're going to need. Since I had the room, I basically grabbed everything out of my storage box, so I'll never need to worry about needing anything while I'm building. The first order of business is just to get rid of all these extra rooms that always comes on every single freighter. Now every single time you remove these rooms or any of the stuff in it, you will get the components back. Before we can build anything, you really don't have very many things you can actually build, so we're going to have to head over here and waste all those salvage frigate modules we spent hours farming. The pieces that don't have a nanite cost attached to them, those are the pieces I ended up purchasing on this round. Now, I might buy some of the windows here in just a little bit. Oh man, I like totally forgot that the ship colors actually cost nanites, and I'm going to have to burn 10,000 nanites to get blue and yellow. Man, I'm telling you, I literally don't have enough daggone friggin' modules for all these. See what I'm talking about? These warp upgrades are really, really expensive, so... <laughs> well, looks like I'm gonna be farming more of the friggin' modules soon. Today is not that day, so let's just start getting a refinery line all set up. You'll need one refiner for each plant type. Now you'll be building two to three cultivation chambers off the end of each one of those refineries. Right now you're seeing me build two chambers off each one, but here in a bit I'm going to add an extra row. Let's now plop down a galactic terminal. We're going to put this really centrally located. Right near my galactic trade terminal, I'm going to plop down one of my teleport chambers. Now we'll be able to teleport to and from our freighter. Let's now throw down all ten of our storage rooms. This is going to give us like an absolute insane amount of storage space for any loot that we feel like, you know, accidentally stuffing in our bags and oh my goodness it's gonna take me forever to run back I'm gonna plop down my construction specialist room right next to my galactic terminal scanner rooms are actually pretty cool so let's plop that next to the teleporter you want to place at least three or four fleet command rooms near the front of your freighter since we're in the neighborhood might as well stick my orbital exocraft materializer right here going to create a stellar extractor room. Now you're going to want to build quite a few of these because they literally just grab materials right out of thin air based off a of star type. For this next step, you're going to need all the elements shown right here except for the Mordite. Right now we don't have very much on hand, so we're going to have to create more. First, let's start with frost crystals. In order to get more of those, you just mix it with dioxide in your refiner. 
You can create more fungal mold by mixing the mold with ammonia. Star bulb can be mixed with paraffinium to create more star bulb. If you need more cactus flesh, well, you can mix that with pyrite to get even more. Gamma root plus uranium will make yourself some more gamma root. Mixing selenium and phosphorus together will get you more selenium. If you put facium by itself in a refiner, it'll create moridite, but we're gonna mix it with oxygen to create more facium. Once you get a bigger stash than this of facium, start turning it into moridite. Once you have a stash of each of the plant materials, you're free to start planting. And we're gonna start with frostwort here because it mainly makes glass as well as living glass. You will need quite a bit of that if you plan on making any really super cool bases on any really neat planet or moons you find in the future. I'll be planting my gamma weed right next to the frostwort. The main purpose of gamma weed is to create lubricants. Now this is a blueprint that you don't have yet, but you are kind of preparing to have it pretty soon. One lubricant and five glass will make one living glass. So that's mostly what you're going to be using this for. Lubricant can also be used in some cooking recipes, so don't go wasting all your lubricant on your alone time, traveler. Time to plant some fungal clusters. I'm just going to stuff these right next to the gamma weed. The main benefit of growing fungal clusters, you'll have the ability to make acid, which is one of the components to make liquid explosives. Mordite root is the second component needed to actually create acid, so I'm just going to be planting them right next to my fungal mold. Now I remember back in the day I used to make my farms like outrageously massive, but these refineries really make it so you don't have to have a gigantic farm anymore. Since I'll be needing facium to create mordite, I might as well plant it right next to the mordite. Facium is the second element you need to create your space lubricants traveler, which in a way is kind of disgusting if you use it for anything else than it's supposed to be used for because this stuff is created from poop. Let's plant something that smells a little bit better, like these star bulbs here. A star bulb can be used for cooking as well as a few other odds and ends, but mostly you're going to be growing this to create polyfiber. And polyfibers are one of the main ingredients to make circuit boards. Circuit boards are worth quite a bit of money. Time to plant some cactus. This cactus flesh right here is actually responsible for making two different blueprints. Alone it will make unstable gel and if you pair it with the star bulb, you can create the polyfibers. One thing you might want to keep in mind when growing these, they have a really, really long grow cycle. Leave it to me to forget how to count. As far as the main blueprints go that, you know, you're fixing to get here in a little bit, the solar vine is the very last one that you're going to need to plant. Selenium and frost crystal is the main ingredients to make the heat capacitor. A heat capacitor plus a polyfiber will make the circuit board. Once you complete your farm, you're going to get this really super awesome feeling wash over you. Ah. Now we're ready to start the next stage of our quest. We need to head over to a GEC system and hire an overseer. He's going to man that panel right behind me. Slight detour, they had a whole bunch of really cool modules, so I had to start pimping out my new S-Class multi-tool, of course. You know, just for reasons. Check out the back rooms in a GEC system. You're always going to find the overseer there. And he can kind of shop around. I, I really dig his, like, gigantic ears. And he's kind of purple and white. My wife likes purple and white. So we're going to go with him. Now, we could have started our overseer quest ages ago. But realistically, I like to be, like, super duper spaceman and totally prepared for it. Once you begin your overseer quest, No Man's Sky Singularity really starts to open up. And as long as you follow this guide, hopefully I explained it well enough for you, you are most definitely prepared for anything that No Man's Sky throws at you from this moment on. Trust me, even though I've showed you quite a bit in this Best Start series, I have only scratched the surface of what No Man's Sky has to offer. Good luck, Traveler. You now have the skills for success.